Good day! Before we proceed, let us have another glimpse of the scientific method. As you can see, the image shows how the scientific method is applied in an experiment on the use of fertilizers. Suppose you will require your learners to study the growth of plants. Will you also ask your learners to conduct the same experiment? Will you bring three pots of plants inside a classroom? and put different fertilizers in each pot? Will they see the result in an instant? Or are you going to think of alternatives for them to understand the lesson without conducting a tedious demonstration and with an immediate return of information to the learners? With these things in mind, let me ask you to imagine your science classroom in the future. What would you like to see in your future classroom? What materials in science lessons will you put inside? Will there be materials in your classroom which are usually found in a science laboratory? Or do you want to design your own science laboratory for your learners? Of course, with Education 4.0 in mind, it is expected that your classroom includes ICT-based materials to respond to the existing and emerging needs of 21st century education, especially that we are already in the year 2020 and that you will be teaching after two to three years. Welcome to our lesson on instructional materials in teaching science. This is intended for the pre-service teachers enrolled in BE Ed 111, teaching science in the primary grades and BE Ed 124, Teaching Science in the Intermediate Grades. After our lessons on planning science lessons for grade school learners, with discussion on learning theories and teaching methods used in science teaching, you are now ready to learn on House of Instructional Materials in Science Teaching. This lesson will give you an opportunity to reflect on your lesson plans and the instructional materials you have selected for those plans. At the end of this online lesson, you are expected to acquire an understanding of the answers to the following questions. What are instructional materials? What are the roles of instructional materials in teaching science to primary pupils? What are the guidelines to consider in selecting, preparing, and using instructional materials? And lastly, what are some tips for teachers in preparing, using, and developing instructional materials? The content and the photos of what you will see in this video came from several sources. I do not own any of the photos found in this video. Let us now start. So what are instructional materials? Instructional materials are instructional devices or aids that support the communication process in the delivery of our lessons and the understanding of the learners. They facilitate the activities by giving opportunities for motivation, control, and engagement of the learners. These are not self-supporting because instructional materials are useless without the guidance of the teachers. They are simply supplementary teaching devices. For a more formal definition of what instructional materials are, these are items that assist the information aspect of teaching. It can be human and non-human materials and facilities that can be used to ease, encourage, improve, and promote teaching and learning activities. This means that even teachers or teacher aides are considered as instructional materials. These are resources that organize and support instruction such as textbooks, tasks, and supplementary resources. According to CognitionToday.com, 
there are four major classifications of instructional materials. First, we have the traditional or conventional materials. Some examples are books, flashcards, charts, photocopies of materials, and other writings. We also have digital media materials, such as videos, including short films, that we can use to deliver our content, photos, and even slideshow presentations. These media are delivered using our laptops and projectors, televisions, or smart boards. The third classification is open resources that include expert blogs. For science lessons, there are many scientific reports which we can find from expert blogs and open source journals and integrate in our science lessons even for grade school learners. We also have public databases and forums where intellectual discussions can be found. Lastly, there are testing resources which facilitate assessment processes inside the classroom. We have standardized tests, classroom assignments, online submission, quizzes, and essays. In addition, IMs can be the PowerPoint presentations that we use, charts and graphs, books and articles, manipulatives, which we can find in many science lessons, laboratory equipment. Of course, for grade school learners, we only provide basic laboratory equipment for practicality reasons, not only for the learners, but also for the teacher. Materials for games and tournaments, and materials for project development. That ends our first part about instructional materials.